In this video, I'm going to find the commutator of the ladder operators. These are the definitions for the ladder operators that I've been using for the past few videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. A hat is defined in terms of position and momentum. We also have the imaginary unit i multiplying momentum over here. So when we take the Hermitian adjoint, this dagger notation uh, is telling us that this is the Hermitian adjoint of A. So A dagger is defined to be exactly the same expression, except there is a minus sign over here. So this is the same as taking the complex conjugate. We have to turn I into minus I. All of these other constants are real numbers, and position and momentum are Hermitian. So if we take the Hermitian adjoint or the Hermitian conjugate of these operators, we get the same thing. So x is equal to x dagger, and p is equal to p dagger. And these guys are Hermitian, and they actually correspond to observable quantities. Position and momentum are observable quantities in quantum mechanics. And we have a relationship that links position and momentum together. We have this canonical commutation relation. So the commutator of position and momentum is defined in this manner. So we have xp, and then we subtract off px. And this is equal to i h bar. And I proved this uh, canonical commutation relation in a previous video in the quantum mechanics playlist. We're going to be proving something interesting in this video and it's actually analogous to this relationship. We're going to find the commutator of these two operators. So we're going to take a with a little hat on top. So the hat denotes the operators in quantum mechanics. And we're going to take the commutator of a with a dagger. I'm specifically going to do it in this order. Remember that the order matters. These operators are not necessarily commutative. All of these numbers over here, they're just real values. Well, except i, i is an imaginary unit, but m, omega, and h bar, they are real numbers. So they satisfy commutativity. You can swap the order around when you're multiplying them. But operators do not obey that in general. Sometimes you can be lucky and you'll get commuting operators. If operators commute, then this commutator is, is actually zero. So that's why we actually use this notation. This is a condensed notation for this expression over here. This appears very frequently in quantum mechanics. Commutators are very important. And that's why we are deriving this expression. So let's have a look at what this is. So we're taking the commutator of A with A dagger. And that is the same as A times a dagger minus a dagger times a. So in the first term, we have a and then a dagger. And in the second term, we swap them around. And we have a dagger first and a second. So this is exactly the same as this notation. So this is just a condensed notation for this expression. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute these definitions into this expression over here. So what's going to happen when I multiply these two operators. If we ignore the order for now and we just focus on this uh, coefficient out the front, this constant is the same in both of these definitions. So we have a square root m omega over 2 h bar. And in both of these terms, we're going to multiply this constant by this constant. So we're going to get rid of the square root because we're going to be squaring. We have two copies and they're being multiplied next to each other. So that's going to give us m omega over 2h bar. So m omega over 2h bar just comes from these constants at the front. Now we have to consider what's happening with these brackets. So these brackets are also very important. And the order does matter with these ones, because these contain operators. And these are non-commuting operators. Position and momentum, uh, they, they matter. The order in which you apply them matters. Because position in the well, actually, uh, momentum in the position representation is a derivative. So this is a derivative, and this is multiplying by x. And you can't swap the order of those guys and expect to get the same result. That's what we proved in a previous video. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of this stuff in brackets. So I'm just going to factor this term out because it appears in both of these products. So first, we're going to have a look at a times a dagger. So we're going to have this times this. So we're going to have the plus sign first, and then the minus sign. So we're going to have x hat plus i over m omega p hat 
And then we're going to multiply that by the minus sign version. And we're going to have minus over here, m omega p hat. And we have to subtract from that the swapped over version. So we have to swap the order of these guys. We have to put the minus sign first and then the plus sign. So we're going to have x hat minus i over m omega p hat. And then finally, we multiply by the plus version. And again, we have i m omega and p hat. Now close all these brackets. And we also have a big bracket to close over here. So all of this is being multiplied by this constant out the front because it is shared and it comes from squaring this square root because it appears in both of these terms. Now, what can we do? We have to expand these guys out. So let's write that underneath. I'm going to expand all of this. So first, I'm going to expand these guys. If I multiply this x with this x, that's going to give me x squared. But I'll write down this constant out the front first. So I have m omega over 2h bar. I'm going to multiply that by all of this expansion. So I'm going to have x hat squared. Then I'll take this second term over here and this second term, multiply them together. i and minus i are going to give me plus 1. And then I'm just going to have to square everything else. So I'm going to get momentum squared over m squared omega squared. So there's a shared term over here. We have m and omega, and we're just squaring all of that stuff. So i times i is the same as i squared, which is minus 1. And minus 1 times minus 1 gives me a plus 1. So that explains these terms. Now, let's have a look at these mixed terms. This is where we have to be very careful with the sign. So let's take the outer terms. So this outer term over here, so we have position. We're going to multiply it by this term with momentum, and it has a minus sign. So I'm going to take this factor of minus i, uh, minus i over m omega. I'm going to factor that outside. So I'm going to get minus i over m omega. That's this part over here. And I'm also going to get an xp. So first I have x, and then I have p. So I'll have xp. And what about this term over here? Well, I have px, and I have a plus sign. But I can turn that plus sign into two minus signs. So I can write some brackets over here. And then I'm going to have minus px. And have a look at this. This is the entire expansion over here, including both of those mixed terms. So we get an xp with a minus sign. That's from the outer terms. And the inner terms combine together to give px. That's px over here. And it has a plus sign. That's because we have a minus sign and a minus sign. And together, they give a plus. So I've chosen to factor out a minus sign over here. And I have minus i over m omega. This is important. This is going to be very important in a second. Now let's factor out all of this stuff over here. So we're going to get very similar terms. The uh, first term, we're going to get x squared. But we need to subtract that off. So we're going to have minus x squared. And we're also going to have minus momentum squared over m squared omega squared. So we're going to have the negative versions of those because of this minus sign. Now we have to be very careful with the sign over here. We're still going to have this i over m omega. And we're still going to have an xp and minus a px. So we'll put that over here. We're going to have xp minus px. That is still going to be present. And I'll close this bracket off over here. But what's the sign going to be out the front? So over here I have a minus sign. But what's the sign inside when I expand this out? So this xp term is positive. Here I have an x, and here I have a p. So that is positive. Over here I have a p and an x, and that is negative. So this is the correct sign. But then when we add an extra minus sign, when we have to distribute this minus sign over, this is going to introduce a minus sign over here. So we get an extra minus sign from this. Otherwise, we would have a plus sign. And isn't that neat? We have the same sign as we do over here. So this minus sign has come from the inside expansion. So we've expanded these brackets out. And this x minus p has multiplied together to give us minus xp. So that's where this minus sign comes from. But this minus sign didn't come from the inside. It came from the outside. And that's why we have the same sign. And have a look at these terms here. We can actually cancel these terms with each other. So these guys and these guys are going to get canceled. 
So we have x squared minus x squared, and we have this momentum term, and it's also going to get cancelled. So we're going to have two copies of this. And I'll write that underneath. So we're going to have, we still have this constant out the front. So we still have m omega over 2h bar. And now we're going to have minus 2i. And what we're going to have downstairs, downstairs we're going to have m omega. So that's 2 times minus i over m omega. And we still have this combination of x and p. So we have xp minus px. What can we do to these constants out the front? Well, these constants are actually very convenient for us. Here we have an m omega in the numerator, and then the denominator, we're actually dividing by m omega as well. So m omega is going to cancel with m omega. We also have a factor of 2 up here, and we have a factor of a half over here. So these 2s are also going to cancel. So we're going to lose m omega on 2. That's good. We're going to be left with h bar, and we're still going to have this minus i. And I'm also going to group this up slightly differently. But first, I'll write the constant that is out the front. So we're going to have, uh, we're going to lose all of these m omega over 2, and we're just going to have minus i over h bar. And all of this combination, we can recognize, I'll just add a little hat on this x because it's an operator. We need to have a hat there. Uh, all of these guys are going to get combined together, and they're going to get turned into the commutator of x and p. So we have the commutator there. And I'll close this square bracket. This is also the same as 1 over i h bar times the commutator of x and p. I'll make sure to put these little hats on top. Sometimes people like to omit those hats, but I like to keep those hats so we can distinguish the operators. These guys are all operators from the numerical numbers. These, are, these guys are just numerical coefficients out the front. And they can be commuted. But these operators cannot. So have a look at this. I've just turned this minus i into 1 over i. That's because minus i is actually the reciprocal of i. Those guys are multiplicative inverses of each other. So if we move i up or down in the fraction, we have to introduce a minus sign. So what about this guy over here? This is the same as i h bar, right? as, as we know from the canonical commutation relation. So that's going to give us i h bar from this canonical commutation relation, and we're still dividing by i h bar. So we have to divide by i h bar, and we have the same thing in the numerator and the denominator, and that's going to give us 1. So have a look at this. What have we found? All of this other stuff cancels, and we're just left with 1. So that means, we'll write this down underneath, here is the big takeaway message of this video. The commutator of a with a dagger is equal to 1. And if we swap the order, we know that the commutator is anti-symmetric. So if we swap the order around, and we take a dagger with a inside the commutator, that's going to give us minus 1. And analogously, uh, we also have the canonical commutation relation, which is between position and momentum. Over here, we have i h bar. And if we swap the order around, if we have momentum first, and then position, that's going to give us minus i h bar. So can you see how these guys are actually analogous? These guys are essentially saying the same thing. We have two observables that don't commute with each other. Over here, we have a factor of i h bar, but that factor disappears in these two guys. So this property where if you swap the, uh, in, inter, these, these terms on the inside of the commutator, if you swap them around, that property is called anti-symmetry because we have a minus sign over here. This swapping introduces a minus sign. So these guys are the commutator relationships for the ladder operators, and these guys are the canonical commutation relation. So we can use the canonical commutation relation to, to actually derive these guys over here. And we're going to be using these commutators in later videos. Make sure you check out those videos. You can find them all in the quantum mechanics playlist. If you click over here.